uh, welcome back to Bunter's Yard. Today is a request, I had an email uh, yesterday from Anthony, who's one of our subscribers and also a customer on uh, the Bunter's Yard website, asking if uh, we could do a burned out version of, uh, of a vehicle, uh, which he wants to add to his layout. So uh, just want some ideas really. So not done one of these before. So I uh, had a little investigation. I uh, looked at lots and lots of pictures of uh, different burned out vehicles and kind of come up with a scheme of how we're going to do these things. So let's just get out of the box first. Always have trouble with these boxes, but uh, let me uh, bear with me. There we go. No, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so first thing we need to do is take this apart because we don't want to paint the windows. So these are uh, these are screwed together underneath, so they're quite uh, easy to do. Unlike some which are uh, sort of riveted together. So just pop these screws out. And that then lets us take it apart. Hopefully the windows won't be glued in. They're not always on these uh, on these Oxford diecast vehicles, so they're normally just uh, popped in, um, which they are. So that's that's dropped out. So that's great. And uh, the interior and the glass uh, we'll deal with in a bit. Put that out of the way. Now I think the back windows, what we'll do, we'll keep those, uh, we'll put them back in and we'll maybe paint those with a lack of smoke colour so the inside looks like it's got some uh, some smoke damage to it. And so we're just left with the uh, with the body shell. So first thing uh, we need to do is to uh, flat back the uh, paintwork. It's much too shiny, definitely for a Ford van of this age. This is the Transit Mark 1. Uh, they were never this shiny. Um, and definitely if this one's been in a fire and been used for a while it wouldn't be uh, as shiny as this so what we'll do we'll flat it back and that'll do uh, two things one it will make it uh, look a little bit uh, sort of dull and weathered and the second thing is that it will um, allow the sort of powders and any paints to, <clears throat> to key into the, uh, to the paintwork to bodywork so this is a Tamiya sponge now, these are really really great I've got um, four or five different grades of this this is a thousand grit um, because it's a sponge it just molds around lines really easily so uh, it's really nice to do they're not expensive and you only need a small sort of piece like this you can just use that to um, um, to, to get into all the details on your on your model so uh, I suggest getting some of these they are really good much much better than using um, wet and dry obviously a little bit more expensive but much more versatile So we don't need to take much of the paint off. Be careful on some of the raised uh, detail. It will be fairly thin, the paint, and we will go through and reveal some um, some of the metal underneath. As you can see, just on that sort of swathe line along the side of the body, it's just started to pop through. Not a problem anyway with what we're doing here. We could always um, paint some rust over that to uh, add to the effect of a well-used uh, Mark 1 transit van. So we're just going to gently go all around, try not to take too much off. It's really just to uh, key the surface in. Now on this one, because it's been in a fire, um, I think a lot of detail we can leave on. We don't need to worry too much about that. The bumpers on this would have been metal, so they wouldn't have melted. And I think the grill possibly was uh, a press metal as well. I'm not quite sure on the Mark 1. Somebody out there will know and let me know. Um, do, uh, do feel free to leave a comment down below if uh, if you want to um, but because it's um, I think it's probably aluminium if it was like on uh, I had a car of that similar age and it was pressed aluminium so I imagine the grill was aluminium and may have melted that in you know in the heat of the fire but we'll leave it on for now if you go for a later model um, they would have had plastic bumpers you might have to deal with them separately so the first thing we're going to do is just add a layer of smoke on the burnt area. Now we're not going to burn all of this. If you've seen the picture in the thumbnail, you'll see that some of the uh, some of it's still red. 
So we're just going to kind of mark out an area um, where um, where we kind of want the burn and the rust to go. So this in here is a color called uh, Smoke from Vallejo. Um, uh, it's a model color version, so you need to thin that down. And I may have thinned it a little bit too much because it's starting to run a little pressures off on this one, but not to mind. I'm not going to show the colors of the paints on this particular one. I will leave them in the description um, for the, some of the key colors that we've used, especially this one, the smoke. This just adds a nice sort of filter to the edge of the uh, of the burnt area that we're trying to create. Um, you, could, you don't need this color. You can just use a, a very diluted black. It will give a similar effect. It's just to, to as they have that fade from one to another. Now, if you look at burnout vehicles, um, you'll notice that it's oddly enough that the, the sort of the, there's quite a distinct line between the burnt bit and the not burnt bit. Um, so it, it doesn't take a long time to transition between one or the other. So that's what we're trying to uh, sort of create overall. So we're just going to mark this out first of all. We don't need to do all of the uh, even the burnt bit. It's just the edges really. But um, I thought I'd just do that just to sort of um, get more of a key and just to add some colour there just in case. I decide not to, uh, you know, add the uh, the burnt colours and the rust over later. And then um, I'm going to paint the inside of the rear window as well, just with a little bit of a smoke effect. You don't need too much on there. And then we're going to use black and. We yeah, have um, not got the pressure too high on this and we want to get close to the edge of that smoke line that we've fitted but um, I don't want it to go sort of totally up to it so it just leaves a little so a transition you can just see on the Marley sign there it looks like there's a little burnt bit where that's where the smoke has, um, has covered it. Now it won't necessarily all be will be burnt so we're going to leave a few little patches of red paint po poking out here and there maybe that corner um, and that light so we'll just leave that as red for now and try not to be too heavy with the paint you don't necessarily need to, to cover everything we don't need it totally uh, obliterated and obscured by the black paint there will be bits of red uh, paint sort of poking through this course is bad fire then obviously uh, it may have engulfed the whole thing it may be totally in black but we're assuming it's not quickly paint the insides the bits we'll possibly see through the windows or the uh, the apertures where the windows used to be at the very least we're just going to paint them into black I'm not going to give much attention to the inside on this particular one we'll just be concentrating on the bodywork so our next step is to add some white now this is a uh, Vallejo white and it's probably a white that I wouldn't recommend. Um, this is off-white, that makes a lot of difference. Um, the pigment's really, really thick in this one. It, it always comes out very splattery. I just don't like it. It's never, never get a good, um, it's never good when it's like fine. Uh, I'm trying to get an edge on this. So um, it's probably not too bad with what we're doing here, but um, I've heard that the, yeah, the Tamiya um, matte white is the one to be with. So. Uh, I'm going to get one of those and give that a try and uh, next time I use white I shall let everybody know if it's, uh, if it's any better. But anyway this is, uh, yeah they say the colour called off white and we're just going to cover some of the areas again we'll leave uh, that sort of black transition because that's generally what happens is that so the, uh, the, the colours that we've got on this so the white would be the areas where the paint has, has been burnt away totally so the white areas it would be the bit where eventually the rust would start to form. So um, 
then you've got the black which is just the, the soot mark and then you've obviously got the original color the red so uh, yeah over the white is where we're going to aim our uh, rust and generally it rusts you won't always get you know all of the paint um, or the areas where the paint were won't always turn to rust um, sort of straight away so there will be a little bit of white poking through and some rust here and there so depending on like how old or uh, your vehicle is and how long it's been um, sort of burnt out will determine how rusty it needs to be once the paint is um, has been burnt away it will rust up really really quickly so uh, as you see it here that would be like day one um, and then as it goes on through the uh, few days and so on it will start to rust but anyway let's carry on we're going to sponge a uh, sort of stipple on the next layer you can use a brush we just used an, uh, a sponge for this one and we've got three colors white and black and uh, and that rust color that orangey rust and we're using this, uh, this makeup sponges just to get a clean bit on the end And we're going to use the black and the white. We're going to mix them together and have a, just a slightly sort of dirty white grey colour. It's just to add um, a bit of tone or variety to that white. We don't want it to be just um, that horrible, just plain white. It just looks too uh, too clean, I think, for what we're going to do. So with our sponge, we'll just. Uh, dip it in the paint and then we're going to sponge a lot of it off we don't want too much on there and then we'll just dab it around now if you do this uh, with a sponge or a brush just make sure you rotate the sponge um, every couple of sort of dabs otherwise you will end up with a, a very distinct and obvious pattern and um, that's not going to look too good And we're not trying to cover the whole of that white area, we just try and add a few sort of variations of colours into that. So uh, don't, uh, don't cover it all. So now we need to add some of the rust. So this is a, the brightest orange rust that I could find. Um, it, just to, uh, we're not trying to colour it with rust. We're just trying to add a sort of um, a, a sort of hint of this rust. So this come out a little bit light. Maybe we could have used a darker colour after all. But it's just to um, add a sort of foundation for for the rust that we're going to work on in a moment with our powders. Now if your um, your vehicles have recently burnt out, um, car or van, um, yeah, by all means use a, a slightly darker shade of uh, of paint uh, rust colour to sponge on like this, and that would probably do. And you could probably finish just about there. We're going to go a little bit more extreme, sort of a older older looking. Um, so we're going to add some powders on in a moment.
So let's um, work on some rust powders. So we're going to use the brightest rust that we've got, that bright orange there. And we've got a different, couple of different shades in there, and usual. Link um, is in the description to this set of uh, Vallejo Rust pigments. And we're just going to dot it on. We're using a smaller brush than normal here. And we're just going to dab it in the places where we want it to show. And we need to create a bit of variation, so we will be sort of switching between the, the four shades of rust that we've got. So the darker one there, and there is a darker one just off camera, which is the um, burnt umber, I think it is. And then using a the bigger brush just to soften it, blend it all together. yellow one is um it's really worth trying that if you're doing any rust it looks a bit odd and you think well oh, i don't remember rust being yellow but it adds just a nice little speckly highlight in don't use too much of it um but yeah it does uh does really show well it's quite subtle but it, um, it does make a, a bit of a difference so uh certainly give it a go if you do get this set from vallejo so just going to blend it in a little bit not not going too hard don't want to um to completely blend it we still want some variation between one of the rust tone and another And because we're filming this really close up, um, some of the edges of the paint, the white especially, is quite obvious. But um, from a, a normal viewing distance, that's, um, that's not going to be an issue. I'm looking at it here, and it's maybe 18 inches away, and um, you can't see any of that sort of transition. It all kind of blends into one. Uh, I think it looks just about right. So we're going to use our, um, our regular weathering powder. This is Humbrol Dark Earth. We've used this on uh, nearly everything I've done, I think, this year. Uh, just a nice color. It works well. And we're just going to cover uh, the red areas just to uh, sort of blend those in a bit more to the, uh, to the fire damage we've created. You don't need, again need to do this step if your vehicle is uh, is fairly new and it's been stolen, abandoned, and burnt out. Then um, it may be completely clean. It could be sitting in a parking lot um, and just caught fire. So it doesn't necessarily have to be dirty. But this one is going to uh, possibly end up on our traveller site on the layout. So uh, it needs to be a bit grubby all around. I think on this particular one. So 
So just a few uh, final touches with the powder. This is uh, black and this is a Humbrol black. Uh, now I find the Humbrol black um, is, is one of the better blacks out there. So I've used the Vallejo black before, like Vallejo products, but um, it doesn't seem to sort of uh, leave much of an effect. It doesn't seem to adhere to anything. Um, yeah, someone explained to me that it, they're made differently. One's a pigment and the other ones are fine. I think it's a pastel. Not sure which one is which. Um, but uh, Tim from Scrapline knows the answer. If you're watching Tim, maybe you could uh, you could make a note down below this so that everyone can uh, everyone knows. But I think the Humbrol one is the one that you use as well. And uh, it was a good call, and I'm glad I've got it. So on the inside and on the wheels, I'm just giving this a clear lacquer. Uh, this is a matte varnish just to give the uh, the powder something to stick to. I'm not taking too much time on the inside. It's not going to be that um, that viewable for, for what this particular use for this one. But we just want to get a bit of colour in there. It would look uh, wrong if it was pristine. And the same with the wheels, need to remember the front and the back. Now the front is the bit to the left, or the, to the top of your picture. And um, that will be uh, more dirty than the back one. So uh, maybe slightly heavier rust on the front wheels than on the back. Or we could um, paint it black. We'll just leave it rusty, I think, for today. And then the glass. The inside needs to just cut that. Maybe using a scalpel isn't the best idea. Um, but anyway, I did manage to cut it and crack it in the end, and we need to glue that in place, otherwise it doesn't um, support it. And then quickly reassemble. So we just pop the screws back in. And then just a final touch, I'm just going to add in a few sort of dots of rust so we can use this colour or a different shade. Just to add uh, sort, of, sort of little highlights, some little detail, just along maybe the roof line. And then on that, um, on the bonnet section as well. And then we could add some on the back. I've, I've added a few to the, uh, the rear bumper as well, that was much too clean for a... Uh, Mark 1 Transit, that would be bad to bits. And uh, there we go. That's it, all finished. Just quickly put it on a diorama base, just really made that up really, really quickly. Um, and there we go. Um, I hope this was useful, a little bit different, um, as always. And um, Anthony, thanks for the suggestion. Hope this was good for you. And we'll see you next time on Bunter's Yard. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.